All right, so we are starting with polar coordinates for section 8.2. And uh, some of you may or may not have seen anything about polar coordinates, but polar coordinates are just a different way of graphing. Uh, you'll notice that the graphs look a little bit different. There's a couple examples of uh, just some polar graphs on here that you can look at. So when we're doing polar graphs, the pole, what we consider the pole, right here is the origin of the coordinate plane so the origin right here and is right there is called the pole and then the polar grid is a series of circles radiating out from the pole so the grid you can see is a whole bunch of circles that just radiate out in this case there's only four circles but we could put as many in there as we needed to and label them differently and so the way that we're going to plot points is we are going to use radian values in this case so the first value which is what we call the polar coordinates this is compared to cartesian coordinates the plane that we're used to graphing on is what we call the cartesian plane and the Cartesian coordinates. This is a polar plane and a polar grid and polar coordinates. So the points are labeled as R, which stands for radius, and theta, which is going to tell us how far around the circle to go. So it's kind of like plotting within the unit circle, except for we're going to go out with more than a radius of one. And then those are going to be plotted on the polar grid. So for this point that we have down here, this point is graph the point 2, so we go out for a radius of 2 units, so out to the second circle, and then we are going to rotate pi over 4 theta, or degree, or uh, radians, I guess I should say. So this pole right here, this is pi over 4, and so we have the point 2 pi over 4. Now, the, the kind of confusing part about polar co coordinates is any one of these coordinates can be written with a negative radius. And so on this pole, you can kind of see there's negative negative values on here too. But you have to be careful. I don't, I'm not gonna really plot anything in the third, you know, second, third, fourth quadrants. I'm just gonna stick with quadrant one for right now. Um, so I think it's kind of confusing at first, but I'm just gonna write this point in another way. So this point right here is the point two pi over four. That one's pretty easy to find. But we can also write this with a negative radius. So if we are writing with a negative radius, then it means that it is using the theta value on the opposite of the pole, opposite side of the pole. So if this is our pole, we've got pi over four here, what would our radians be if we went all the way around here? Well, these are all at uh, over four degrees, uh, radians. <clears throat> so this one here is going to be the 5 pi over 4 pole. So on that one, we would have negative 2 and 5 pi over 4. So what that means is that we have rotated 5 pi over 4 theta radians, and then we come out from the pole negative 2 units, which means we go away from that angle that we just found. So we're going to go on the opposite end of the pole, and that's going to bring us back to this point again. So that's two ways of writing the same point in polar coordinates. Okay, so we have two points that we need to graph here. Example number one, plot the polar point 3 and 5 pi over 6. Now you can see in this graph that there's a lot more lines on this one than there was on our last one to, to label our theta value with. So uh, we need to figure out how many they are so we know where all of our normal values are that we're used to using. Um, hold on. Okay, we're working again. Okay, so back to plotting our polar point. So this is telling us that we are going to a radius of 3 and that our radians or a theta value, is at 5 pi over 6. So let's first start by labeling a few. We know that this is going to be 0 and 2 pi. Uh, we know this is pi over 2 and pi. So let's get a few of these easy ones out of the way. Uh, it looks like 
this one right here in the middle. So this one is going to be pi over 4 right here. And so we've got six lines here. We don't normally have that many. Uh, so we just want, so it's going to go by 12. So this, this is going by 12. So this is pi over 12, which normally we don't use. And then 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. Pi over 4 we already got labeled. And this one here is going to be pi over 3. Okay, so they've got a lot of lines on here. It's a little bit confusing, but I'm just going to go through and mark the ones that we normally use. Okay, there we go. This will help. All right, so this one is, uh, what are we going to have? 3 pi over 4 here. Um, this one here is going to be 5 pi over 6, and that's the one that I want right there. Okay, so this tells us that we are going to rotate 5 pi over 6 radians and go out from the pole uh, radius of 3. So 1, 2, 3. So there is our point right there. Now I'm going to also tell you what a secondary point would be for that. So if I wanted to write that with a negative radius, it would be negative 3 But now, instead of the 5 pi over 6 theta, we need to go the opposite side of the pole, which is super hard to see on this. Sorry, these are so close together. That would be this one right here. And in this quadrant, we are 1 less than twice. So uh, 11 pi over 6 over here. And... So we've got the point negative 3, 11 pi over 6 is also this point here. Kind of confusing, but just remember with those negative, that negative radius, the theta value is referring to the theta marked the opposite of the pole. Okay, let's go down to this next one. Now this next one, we're starting with a negative radius. So plot the polar point negative 2 pi over 4. So let's first find our theta. So theta, is it going to be at pi over 4? That's this one right here. So we find pi over 4, but now when we start to count out our radius, we've got our uh, pole here in the center. Instead of counting out toward on this angle that we just found, we're going to go the opposite direction. So we're going to go, oh, these are so hard to see, 1, 2, this way make sure that I got the right theta value. I should zoom in on that a little bit. Um, yep. <clears throat> okay, so that is my point right here. So we first find our theta value, which was pi over 4, and then instead of counting on that line, we're going to go to the opposite side of the pole. So what would a point be with a positive radius? So if I wanted to say this was the radius of 2, which theta value am I on? Well, we are on, this is an over 4 again. In that case, it is going to be one more. So 5 pi over 4 and 2. So these two point, these two polar coordinates give me the exact same point. All right. All right, for a little more practice, let's look at some of these examples. So for point A, we have the point 3 and pi over 6. So remember, the, this grid that I have on here is broken into 12 per quadrant 1 and 2. So uh, this value here, this is going to be my pi over 6 radians. And then we want the positive 3, 1, 2, 3 radius. So this point right here is going to be the point A. Okay, and then we have negative 2 and pi over 3. So pi over 3 was this value right here. So we got pi over 3 and then negative 2. So that means we're going to start at the pole but go the opposite direction. So 1, 2. So this is the point negative 2 pi over 3. And then 3 pi over 4 is 
gonna be this one right here. <clears throat> so the point four, one, two, three, four, three pi over four out here at the end. So there is my point C. This was my point B. Um, make sure I get on all those. Yep. All right. We'll move on to our next example now. All right. So one thing that we're going to look at is the relationship between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. And you guys don't know it, but this is really a lot of what you have been doing. All of this should look very familiar to you. So we have x equals r cosine theta. This is exactly what we first learned at the very beginning of this semester. And y equals r sine theta. Everybody should know that. Um, and then also, this x squared plus y squared equals r squared. This has come up a few times, actually proved it a few times. Uh, Normally, what we have the 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 way we have seen this before is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals one. Well, remember that only works for the unit circle, and the reason that um, that that we're not doing just one here anymore, we have to put an r squared in here, is because now we are working with our polar coordinates, which can be bigger than a radius of just r, so or just one. So let me show you again how we prove that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of both of these equations, which is going to square all of that. I'll rewrite this in a minute so it looks a little better. But what I'm doing is squaring both sides of the equation. So now I have x squared equals r squared cosine squared theta. <clears throat> and then y squared equals r squared sine squared theta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add both of these together. Now nothing is uh, like terms. I can't um, combine anything. So I'm just going to have x squared plus y squared on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. And then we're going to factor out that r squared on the right-hand side. So once we factor out the r squared, what do we have left? We have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. And what do we know about cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? It is all equal to 1. So what that leaves us with is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. All right, so those are the main equations that we are going to use when we are converting between polar to Cartesian. So when you're going from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, those are the equations that we want to look at. Okay, uh, so let's go down here and look at example number three. Let me move my page down. All right, for example number three, we need to find the, car the, polar, the co Cartesian coordinates for these polar coordinates. So we're going to use these equations up here. X equals R cosine theta and Y equals R sine theta. We know R is equal to 5 and theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. So you can use your unit circle for this one because they've given us a nice value. So we have x equals 5 cosine of theta, which is 2 pi over 3. And then y equals 5 sine of theta, which is 2 pi over 3. So now using your unit circle, we see that we have this one is equal to 5 times negative 1 half. And this is equal to, oh, oops, I don't need two negatives on there, sorry. And then 5 times the square root of 3 over 2. So we've got negative 5 halves, 5 square root of 3 over 2. And those are our x and y values. We could write those as a Cartesian coordinate, <clears throat> which would be negative 5 halves and 5 square root of 3 over 2. And that's how we convert from a polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates.